could i start the presentation sir dear urologists uh, pure fb viewers good evening one and all uh, today our topic is rirs in challenging cases uh, and uh, uh, some of the ecrs cases as you all know lot of people are doing rirs now it is relatively uh, uh, learning curve is uh, not that uh, steep like in pcnl so if the ureter is dilated any simple cases uh, with the experience of 20 to 30 cases you can go further and do a little larger cases also especially in the era of disposable flexible scope and good lasers so today our speaker is dr hiran s soda in fact last 5 years we are meeting in the conferences we know each other and in fact yesterday only he demonstrated a very good rirs case in bilaspur under the uh, west zone urology meeting conducted by uh, uh, conducted by the chatisgarh urology society so kamlesh has organized and so many cases so many juniors and seniors were doing and uh, majority of them were able to do the powder and do that so in that case uh, slowly complex cases also will come across that also you love to do if the pcnl is not uh, uh, if not suitable particularly so before going to the uh, presentation i like to introduce uh, dr hiran soda by asking some of the questions and uh, and then officially introduce and then hand over the program good evening sir thank you very much for accepting the invitation dr hiran sir very nice to see you again yeah yeah, yeah. just like we just met uh, and uh, sir also demonstrated very good surgery of vcirs and uh, rirs uh today again we are going to show uh, some who is the who is the surgical mentor sir in mbbs where did you do your mbbs sir sir i have done mbbs and ms from uh, bijapur karnataka uh, bijapur karnataka from bld medical college okay My, uh, ms uh, teacher was dr bc upin he is a okay. senior professor there and uh, i did urology from uh, mumbai from harkishandas hospital dr nayan sangvi sir was my guide and dr gaurangsha sir was also my one of my teachers and Very good. Then i have done fellowship from uh, university of amsterdam uh, mm-hmm. under the guidance of professor dela rosett and uh, conducted so, seven uh, who, who who is your uh, who is the one who influenced you to join the urology sir my uh, when i was doing ms uh, we had a urology department there that was the only super speciality department and uh, as ms uh, students had to go and assist there so and uh, i love doing endo urology because i love driving so it is like driving in the system and uh, that makes my life easy because i am loving what i am doing like uh, you go on long drive also long drive yes. long drive yes. how many kilometers you have gone longest distance 1000 kilometers yes, sir i have driven 1175 kilometers in one go from mumbai to rajamundry in andhra pradesh Oh, Rajamundri, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, very nice. The highest I've done and regularly in Mumbai, Hyderabad, I'm driving. Uh, by 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 car. Regularly, sir. More than twenty times we have done Mumbai, Hyderabad, and oh. I've driven up to Calcutta. I've driven in Germany, Spain, Netherlands. I've done. Do you uh, like uh, driving? What is your car now? Uh, sir, I've got two BMWs, one car, and uh, one Vento. So you are uh, you are little interested in the cars also. very much sir very much i have uh, trained on porsche 911 in los angeles okay so 911 there very nice i, uh, I must appreciate the urologists having this much grace so yes. with this uh, i will introduce officially and then we will take the program uh, very nice that is very nice uh, so today talk is challenging cases of rirs and video demonstration of ecirs by dr hiran soda he uh, is ms general surgery dnb and fellow in urology He is an urologist based in South Mumbai, India. He is attached to the leading hospitals in the city like Safi, Bridge Candy, and Bocard. Dr. Soda did training in urology from S- uh, uh, HN Hospital, Mumbai, to further pursue his passion for endo urology. He travelled to Amsterdam for his fellowship program at the Academic Medical Centre, University of Amsterdam, under the guidance of Professor J J M C H De La Rosette. In Amsterdam, he had opportunity to participate in various operative workshops conducted by Professor. He was actively involved in clinical research office of Endo Urology Society Croes as the clinical data coordinator from the Croes head, of, head office in Amsterdam. Following his return to India, he joined the Ardi Stone Hospital in Mumbai. 
Dr. Soda is the faculty of CMAST uh, um, and upper tract endourology. He also conducted several live workshops across the country and published uh, various national and international papers. With this introduction, every, every surgeon will have their own challenging cases, their own interesting cases. Our idea of making this is so that juniors can attempt such cases with uh, vision, with open-mindedness. They can learn by seeing this video. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Hiran, sir. Thank you, sir, for the elaborate uh, introduction. And it's a pleasure again to be with you, sir. And I will uh, humbly present my presentation. Uh, can I do a screen share? Yes, please. Are you able to see the screen, sir? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yes, so, yeah. good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, happy to be part of this uh, extensive forum and uh, good to see so many thousands of people on this group created by sir. Uh, it's a real honor to be on this group and uh, share the information with all you learned colleagues. So, today we are going to talk on uh, some challenging cases and difficult situations in RIRS. And uh, at any given point of time, sir, may interrupt and uh, also add his yes. experience. Thank you, sir. So, uh, today we all want to do uh, RIRS because uh, we go back to the saying of hypocrites that I will not cut even for the stone, but leave such procedures for the practitioners of the craft. There are special situations where flexible is really preferable in today's day and time where cholesterol or diverticulum horseshoe kidney, ectopic kidney, cross-fused ectopia. So, these are the cases where now flexible is taking over uh, the PCNL. Special situations where uh, flexible is preferable, like uh, severely encrusted stent. Now we can go by the side of the stent. Urinary divergence, la like with having metropion of principle. Pregnancy, coagulation disorders, transplanted kidney, morbidly obese kidney, and uh, scoliosis with spinal deformity. And now, especially in pilots and sailors, even if they have 2 mm, 3 mm stone and they are grounded by the DGCA, wherein uh, we are uh, able to remove the stone and make them back to work in one day. So, yeah. we'll do the special applications. Uh, flexible uh, URS using holmium and now even thulium fiber laser is very effective and minimally invasive technique. It has the potential of becoming the preferred treatment choice in for minimally invasive management of patients with calicial diverticular stones. Flexible and PCNL both were used, but both the techniques have overall high success rate and symptom-free rate with similar complication rates and stone bearing, uh, in stone-bearing calicial diverticular. Major complication rates may suggest that consideration for invasiveness of the PCNL. Therefore, flexible procedure has an advantage with respect to a shorter hospital stay and absence of major complications and return to work in one day. So I will show this one small case where uh, there was this small uh, radiopaque density on the X-ray and patient had had a, uh, a URS on the other side, but this one stone was there and he could not join his work. He was referred for the management of left renal calculus. So IVP showed that there is a nice calicial diverticulum there and uh, the stone was in the calicial diverticulum. Uh, we usually prefer do, doing CT scan, but this patient had already brought the IVP pictures. This is the retrograde pilogram and uh, we use the blue dye technique wherein uh, we put contrast along with blue dye and then wash out the entire uh, system and only the dye is seen in the calation diverticulum. So this is the blue spritz technique uh, in uh, animation model wherein the dye first uh, inspected the system, dye is injected and then it is going into the calation diverticulum and after washing only the diverticulum contains the dye with the blue and when the, you see the blue coming out, then uh, we can uh, uh, remove it. Yeah. yeah. So this is a small video where uh, we uh, we have put the blue contrast. We have put the we have put the blue contrast. We have put the blue contrast, and we are cutting now the calicial diverticulum. Uh, The very thin membrane there. Which laser you are using, sir? In this so case, this is a Holmium laser. Uh, this was the machine in uh, RG Stone. It was a hundred watt laser by Luminous. This is the yeah. old machine. 
and uh, there you can see typically these secondary so many stones are formed inside did he underwent tswl no no uh, sir this patient had been referred from outside they were trying to break the stone and then nothing was happening and then we did this uh, uh, endoscopic examination and we saw that really? there was a thin membrane with all those multiple stones inside probably that was the result of the eswl yeah yeah after cutting the uh, membrane the stones were free and they could easily be going out we extended it to the to make it big so this is just the animation uh, showing that applications of flexible in different types of kidneys it can be in uh, ectopic kidney cross fused ectopia horseshoe kidney so advantages of flexible in incre it's increasingly used in cases of renal anomalies especially the horseshoe kidneys greater deflection of the scope up to 270 degrees is really helpful progressively thinner laser fibers both sir and me used the latest laser fiber uh, in uh, bilaspur uh, in the last workshop where 150, have, 150 microns na no? 150 micron ji ji 150 micron fiber and they are working on a new fiber which is going to be 100 uh, micron yeah so yeah the fiber has become really thin and is allowing us to perform more difficult deflections and go to parts of the kidney where Uh, it would have been impossible to reach with the thicker fiber. So they are progressively thinner fibers as the technology is advancing. Development all of, of the nitinol stone extractors and techniques aiding to the these are the techniques aiding to the success of the procedure and increasing the usefulness and the life of the apparatus. So with these techniques that are new develop, we are increasing the life of the apparatus. So coming to the second case, you can see there is a dense stone in the KUB, and uh, there was this uh, pelvic kidney also uh, seen on the CT scan. So 43-year-old man with a 29-year-old uh, 29 mm calculus in the ectopic left kidney. There was a past history of laparotomy, which prevented uh, me from taking the decision of lap-assisted PCNL. So flexible URS, uh, I discussed with him in stages. and this is the rgb picture with the flexible in space in place and here we would like to make a special comment that while attempting these cases we should have the special access sheet of 28 cm or the pediatric access sheet sir is doing plenty of pediatric cases and uh, he will know that we we'll, we need the smaller access sheet yes sir so, uh, because the ureter will be small and uh, you will immediately reach the ectopic kidney Uh, length should be definitely less as you mentioned 28 or maybe less than 20 also 28 is ideal as you said ji yes. so this is the x ray after the first uh, stage you could see that only some small uh, debris was remaining this is a video wherein uh, the video quality is not good but what i wanted to insist here is that sometimes it may be difficult to locate the stone but edema may help you to reach the stone So on uh, examining the system, suddenly I noticed this edema here in this area, and then the stone was just there. So the first technique uh, earlier, all of us were doing popcorning. Now we are going into more of dusting mode. But uh, this is how first we did the popcorning completely into very very small fragments. And when star larger stone load is there, I think Sir is also following this technique where we are making it into multiple pieces and then using uh, the popcorning method to make it into very fine dust. Yes, yes. We yes, can't do dusting in a difficult location like this for a long time. Yes, sir. It's very difficult to maintain that position. Yes, so sir. What I did is I made it into multiple fragments and then popcorned it. And after the first stage, there was only fine gravel remaining. And uh, with the stent and uh, stent removal, I did a check scope and made him hundred percent stone clear. This is a very large stone, to be honest. Very large. Yes, sir. Hard also. Very hard, sir. these cases do you think that tfl will do more better popcorn or uh, you can do thunder water i think so now that time i was not having the tfl but i think definitely tfl popcorning is very very efficient very very efficient my second case in bilaspur i exactly demonstrated uh, you and me have the same kind of nature we i don't have that much patience to go on with testing so i do the fragmentation and then in the end popcorning within 5 minutes i think it is Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, popcorning effect of TFL with high frequency very is very good. good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wanted to discuss, sir, what is the frequency around two hundred? You will keep or yes, around one fifty two hundred in one fifty two hundred in TFL. What is the frequency you keep in ohmium hundred? Because I don't use ohmium hundred. Correct, sir. 
and uh, energy would keep 0.5 to 0.7, right? 0.5 to 0.7. Right. Then uh, coming to this very inter interesting uh, case that uh, interesting situation that all of us come across, we put stents but they are forgotten and uh, we are doing everything to remind them but sometimes still we come across this position of retained and encrusted stents. So uh, the re retention of ureteral stents often due to poor compliance of the patient is not uncommonly seen. If left untreated, retained stents result in significant morbidity and mortality. Various treatment combinations have been used for retrieval of these encrusted stents. However, with the advent of flexible technology, it is the preferred endoscopic tool now to retrieve these stents. There are several papers, and I think Sir also must have contributed to this uh, for retained encrusted stents. Uh, in patients with encrusted and retained stents, accurate determination of the proximal burden of the stone is very important, preferably by computerized uh, tomography, and is important for surgical counseling and planning. It is used alone, if used alone, plain x-ray could underestimate the proximal encrustation. So therefore, CT is a must. And a significant proximal stone burden greater than 100 mm square correlated with the need of multiple surgical procedures and surgical complications. Digital stone burden can usually be treated in the less morbid procedures like cystolithotripsy or rigid URS, wherein proximal encrustation might require complex ureteroscopy or PCN. This is a very nice picture showing the different kinds of uh, grading, the lower end, the upper end, then proximal part of the stand, and both the ends, and then the complete stand. And this is the same uh, X-ray demonstration of all these uh, grading activities. So retrograde ureteroscopic surgery is uh, uh, efficient and safe for removing retained stands and associated with stone burdens. Volume laser is essential in performing the encrustation removal or sectioning of the stent, which can also be done now by thulium. So I have a, a small video here. Uh, we had this uh, patient who, who was referred that the stent is not coming out. On studying it, we saw that there is encrustation. But when I went up to the system, I was really surprised that the person who has done the procedure has put the stent going across from the upper calyx into the middle calyx. So the stand was going through and through. And here, if you see in this video, at this part, the stand is going through the calyx into the other calyx. So gently on the surface of the stand, we first just uh, move the disc, the encrustation. Here, the stand is going into the, uh, into the calyx. <coughs> the part of the stand, this encrustation was removed with laser first, so that the white part of the stand is seen. This is through RIRS. Through RIRS. Can you see this the stent going in there? Yeah, yeah. This will take time, Mona. I, I managed it in around 45 minutes. Yeah. So then, because the stent was going to the other side, we sectioned the stent here and took it out. You can see it's going in there, in the, in the mucosa. Okay. This is not common. No, sir. Very difficult. Maybe really? use some zebra wire and forcefully put the stand is what I feel because it is coming out on the other side. Going in from here, coming out there. So you broke you have broken it there? Yes. yes, sir. First with laser, section the stand. First we cut off all the encrustations by just touching them, which were very brittle, and then we sectioned the stand and remove this part and that part separately with the basket. In the video, we will see it. Here we are sectioning the stand. Is it easy to cut the uh, le with yes, laser? Sir, yes. To cut? Yes, sir. yes, sir. With laser, we could cut it easily. Now we are using the basket, sir, to get the straight out. 
Pip is seen now. Pip is seen now. Pip is seen now. We use the engage basket and retrieve through the access sheet. Engage basket is very good, na? Very good, sir. Very good. It has Engage changed the. Good. It revolutionized and decreased the use of tensor kill for me also. Absolutely, sir. It it's very safe. Yes, sir. So then now coming to ECRS uh, with uh, which me and sir both are doing uh, regularly, and uh, I have a small video which is going to describe the entire technique. So I'll just shift to the video, sir. You it's not playing, sir. Huh? It's playing, sir. No, for me it is not playing. Okay, one minute. It is a screen only scene till. Okay, give me one minute, sir. Let me just see. I will have to. Uh, you have stopped at twenty eighth slide and directly your photo is seen now. Yes, sir. I am going to share again. You uh, stop sharing and then go for back again sharing. Yes, sir. You share again. I'll do it soon. So ECRS, you have two people to do. Yes, sir. Two people. Uh, how many of the urologists work in your unit regularly? In when I was working in RG, sir, there was uh, Dr. Varun Gunmanthe uh, who had joined with me and. Uh, and he has uh, he helped me with the ECIRS. We did about eighty supine PCNLs while I was there, mm. and uh, some series of ECIRS. Just one minute, sir. Yeah. Why, why you are not able to share the screen below share screen it will be there below below the computer share screen yellow color yes sir i know but it is not coming sir one minute ah, okay. you, you press that share screen yes sir. did you press i pressed it sir but the video is not uh, playing it's not coming one minute sir no no video you you go you, in your computer you close everything don't worry about the video first yes, you share the screen yes yes sir. i'm doing that only one minute You are not able to share. Unmute, 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 unmute. Now I am sharing, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, plate. Yes, sir. Yes. You are on the video plate. Plate. Sorry about that. Yes, yes. No problem. The voice is not coming. You speak. So this is a ECIRS video. Here we are showing how we are doing ECIRS. Okay. Valdivia urea position. 
Yeah. Here we are doing supra and PCNL along with flexible ureteroscopy. Yeah. So there is a special case that we have selected. There was a complex less stagon calculus showing that different components of the uh, this thing. So this is the starting of the procedure. We usually like to fix the arm like this. And then we are marking the supra and PCNL landmarks, the posterior axillary line and anterior superior iliac spine. This is the marking. Yes. And then we are going to show the window, which you always show the last wave, lower border of the 12th rib and the upper border of the iliac crest. Anywhere below here, we will not be hitting the colon. We usually, after the marking, we put this bag and we do a check ultrasound just to see that there is no bowel intervening. And I just like to push my finger and see that I'm not touching the bowel. This is the Valdivia urea position, the diagrammatic representation of the same and the arrangement of the OR, two video endoscopes. So because my colleague was doing it for the first time, I put in the flexible, then give it to him and then did the supine puncture. This is showing the access sheet going in. Okay. Once we are in, we are, we'll show the endoscopic view now. I'm just putting in the flexible scope. And then we plan to do the endoscopic guided puncture. That's the stone. By passing the stone, we went into the lower calyx. It was a nicely dilated system. And now we are showing the puncture, how it is done diagrammatically. Like you showed in Bilaspur, that colon is always on top. So we do should not go on top, but we should go below. Now we have started the puncture after checking in ultrasound. Normally, I just do the check and then do directly fluoroscopy. We can see in the fluoroscopy that the endoscopic view is also there because the flexible is there inside. I think that movement is a very important thing in uh, PCNL. Absolutely. You can see the needle coming in in the PCNL. Excellent. Very nicely coming inside the, going through the papilla. And on uh, X-ray control. Here we are seeing the dilators coming in one by one. I like using uh, the telescopic dilators. Okay. And we are placing the amplifiers. There is a good efflux because water is coming also from the flexible. Very good. It can be either way as flushed. Flexible scope can flush. Yes. Network can flush. Excellent uh, uh, demonstration. Then we have both the endoscopic views. Now the lower calicial puncture is breaking the main lower calic stone and the pelvic stone. Because this was a nicely carefully selected case, nicely dilated system with a bifid collecting system. That you can see the endoscopic view showing the flexible. We are working with the laser and the stone in the upper calyx is fragmented and brought down. Nicely good fragment has come in the basket. Sizable fragments have come through the engaged basket. Like you said, very good basket. It is good to dislodge also. It easily releases the stone, which is one of the most important properties of a basket capture and good release. That is the final picture, sir. Very good. So, did you remove any stone from the upper calyx and brought it down? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One film. 
Now we are going into the upper calyx. And we are delivering it to the nephroscope. Yeah. Lower mild is completely cleared now, and then we have gone to the upper mild. Very good. That is the upper mild. This was the entry of the lower mild. So all upper mild stones also cleared. Good, very nice case. Last case is very good case or ideal case for RIRS. Yes. So normally I will take a quick question fire if you are finished. Normally, which uh, flexible scope you use routinely in your clinic? Sir, most um, so last uh, ten years I have been using the FlexX 2S, but now uh, I am really happy with the Bioreds because my shoulder has started pinning with the weight of the camera and the light. Case. Very good. Happy with so, uh, you are very happy with the bio red. I'm very happy, sir. Very happy. So, when compared to both, uh, do you think that that 0.5 French extra access sheath will not make any difference in the private practice without stenting also? Yes, sir. It will. That 0.5 French is very important. So, 9.5 French we know that it goes in easily, but sometimes. We have that little difficulty in putting a 10 French. Uh, very good answer, sir. Excellent answer. So, Bayerad is very good, but only problem is in case uh, when 9.5 doesn't go, you have to insert uh, 10 French for the uh, Bayerad uh, scope. That is the only cuff that 0.5 French makes a difference sometimes. So, one should be cautious, uh, uh, put a stent and come out and still use the disposable scope, explain the patient and then come out. This is one point. Which laser you are using since uh, 10 yeah, years, I think? Uh, intercardio thulium fiber laser. Intercardio, uh, uh, intercardio homium. So, thulium fiber laser, we have just bought. If your hospital has bought a thulium fiber laser, and oh. Bridge Candy has got the quanta laser. So, I am using both of them. Quanta is what? homium. Yeah, homium, homium. Uh, what is the 100 watts laser uh, uh, for uh, for? Uh, for faster dusting, 100 watts laser if you take, uh, what is the main difference between 30 watts and 100 watts you are noticing? What is the main difference in RIRS? Because many people say RIRS 100 watts is not required. Anyway, you are working in corporate, so they will have 100 watts. What is the main difference between uh, 30 watts and 100 watts in stone surgery? So I feel in stone surgery, it is not required like you said, sir. Most of okay. the people are saying, saying is right. In stone surgeries, in flexible especially, we must be very careful not to increase the total output more than 25. 
and heat generation also we should be very careful. So even though they have provided, so in hundred watts also you will not use more than twenty five. You will not use. No sir. Okay. I so for for example, what is the frequency you keep? So point two twenty thirty frequency. We can go to forty frequency. So that is the main difference. In thulium fiber laser, you can go up to two hundred. Yes sir. Yes. Sir. So I am using the. That is okay. Yes, sir. I am going up to one sixty-seven or two hundred frequency, but then. Which axis sheet you will use commonly? Which axis sheet you will use commonly? Eleven point five was what I was using all this time because. Okay. Cook, cook axis sheet. XX two S was going through that nine point five cook axis sheet, but okay. with the biorad scope now we are also ordered the ten point seven by cook, or the ten twelve by. Uh, the yeah. When ten twelve also cook is very good. Yes, sir. That is a very uh, that is a very comfortable scope for all these uh, disposable yes. scopes. Sir. That 10. is a very good scope. They have ten point seven. Yeah, it has got ten by twelve. Ten by twelve by rocket. Yeah, very good. And uh, basket you are using uh, uh, seven French N gauge, one point seven French. One point uh, nine, I think one point nine or one point seven French. One point seven. The one point nine is the other one from Boston. One okay. And uh, uh, usually for irrigation, what will you use? Sir, I am used to uh, all my RRS cases. I am using the irrigation system from Cook, but without uh, anybody pressing you by gravity only. So the chamber is filled. In some situation when I need the irrigation, then they just put the hand on the pump. So I I usually fix the pump on the leg, and then I use the extension tubing to a RRS cook. So that means the there is no need to water change in that. That you mean to say? No, sir. So the cook irrigation system has got two uh, chambers. One is filling up so that there is no air coming in, and the second chamber is for the person assisting you to give the irrigation. It is good. Very good, sir. It is exactly. How much cost it will cost to cook a pump? Nine thousand rupees, but it is exactly copied from the Traxer flow, which is made by Rockomet. The Traxer flow was uh, originally designed by Professor Olivier Traxer, which I used to use in Amsterdam. So I was very used to the Traxer flow irrigation. So in cook uh, in cook system, what I am asking, there is no need to exchange the water continuously. It will be coming continuously. So it will be more closed system. One liter, two bottles. If you attach those case, can be comfortably done. Comfortably can be done. Okay, 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 okay. And you need not uh, take from the tra trolley any water and contamination. We need not be there. And uh, generally, which cases you do relook procedure after the RIRS? If it is a very large stone, like recently I did a, a patient who had a 2.9 centimeter stone, but he was on some blood thinners, so we did the entire uh, fragmentation after, and he was in a hurry to go back abroad. So within seven days, I had to do uh, make him stone free. And the CT just today in the morning I've done this case. CT showed 4 mm two fragments. So those uh, while retrieving the stent, I've uh, taken. It. So do you do RGP at the end of all cases, or you don't use CM? If it is a single stone, uh, normally if I have done the stain very well, then uh, I don't do RGP unless it is indicated. But yeah. if there is a lot of dust and I feel that there may be a hidden fragment in the dust, then I see just to check the filling defect. Sometimes I will. What is your protocol for antibiotic? For so antibiotic, I usually do urine culture negative cases, but I use uh, cefuroxime and one uh, a shot of amikacin 750 OD. Okay. Post operatively, how many how many times you will give antibiotic? Two times, one time, three times. Just one time, sir. Next morning when the catheter is removed, and then oral antibiotic for three days after this. Stent removal after how many days? If I am endoscopically sure that I have done a good job, in seven days I remove this. Seven to twelve days. Yes, sir. I am using a five French stent, which I feel has reduced the symptoms. Of the patient. Yeah, even though they say diameter is not important, but I feel the Stiffness of the stent. Of if, the, if the ureter is tight, uh, how will you know uh, to stent or not stent? Six by seven point five scope or any other method you? Six by seven point five. If my six by seven point five is not going in, I don't do the case. Okay. So thank you very much, sir. Nice discussion and yes, especially very last very case, I am impressed. It is a most characteristic, most ideal case for the ECIRS, and you have demonstrated very well. And you, you need to have two urologists and two monitors. As of now, I think only with one monitor and one this thing it is difficult to do. 
yes. so i once again thank you for giving such an excellent presentation thank you for the invite and uh, it was really kind